Hi everyone, today I would like to talk about software vulnerabilities, how to find really interesting vulnerabilities in the overall CVE flow and how to do it automatically. I will briefly introduce myself. I'm an information security analyst. I also help Vulnerscom project with some texts and ideas. And I have a blog about information security automation at avilionov.com, so please subscribe. First of all, let's talk why we may have a need to analyze software vulnerabilities. How people usually do the vulnerability management and vulnerability intelligent tasks. Some people have a vulnerability scanner. They scan infrastructure with it, patch founded vulnerabilities and think that this will be enough. Some people pay attention to vulnerabilities that are widely covered by some media. Some people use vulnerability databases and search for the most critical vulnerabilities by some criteria. So, vulnerability scanners. Huge part of detection plugins were written manually. Especially plugins that work remotely without authentication. It takes time to make them, and so they may appear in scanner with a huge latency. It also might be economically impractical for VM vendors to deal with vulnerabilities in some rare software. Vulnerabilities that are widely covered in media. From the one hand, it's really great. Even top manager may ask you if we have, for example, ghost in our infrastructure or other popular vulnerability. They begin to see that you are doing something important. But on the other hand, vulnerability researchers are also people. And they are interested in making more hype around the vulnerabilities they have discovered. It's just a part of their self-promotion. It's relatively easy to come with a name and register a domain and make a beautiful logo for the vulnerability. And it's hard to understand how critical this vulnerability really is, especially when there are no so much information about it. Here you can see some well-known vulnerabilities that made a lot of noise in the past. Most of them were really critical. But I have seen plenty of publication about Bedlock, saying that this vulnerability was overvalued. Now let's talk about vulnerability databases and feeds. Most people use CVSS vector and CVSS based core for vulnerability filtering and vulnerability prioritization. They may also take into consideration the existence of exploits, for example. But the CVSS is still a basis. What are the common vulnerability scoring system? In fact, there is a framework, a questionnaire, in which some person manually describes the vulnerability. The final result is a score, number from 0 to 10, and a vector containing all the answers in some compact form. What's wrong with CVSS? Filling the questionnaire is highly subjective procedure. You can easily make a mistake or just think differently during the classification, or you may just have a controversial information about the vulnerability. It takes time. That's why CVSS for the vulnerability appears in database much later than a human readable description. In NVD, for example, you can see only base score and base vector, and there is no temporal vector available. CVSS model works well when we talk about desktops and servers, and doesn't really fit for Internet of the Things, for example, and CVSS is not well suited for confidentiality threats. A good example is the well-known Heartbleed. Heartbleed was rated at the medium level vulnerability by NVD, but, on the other hand, Tenable Network Security, the well-known vulnerability management vendor, believes that this vulnerability should have different CVSS vector. So this is a controversial issue. Confidentiality impact is complete or partial. Integrity impact is none or complete. And the final result depends on this. It was the second version of CVSS standard. Now the actual version is third. But in third version problems with confidentiality were not solved either. So my idea was to create an instrument to evaluate vulnerabilities using the data that we currently have. Of course, it would be great to work with some highly formalized descriptions of vulnerabilities. However, as a rule, we do not have such information. We have only different objects, linked with each other and stored in some vulnerability database. If 
we open, for example, hardbleed page at vulners.com, we can see all the objects linked to this vulnerability and the timestamps when objects were created. Using this data, I can calculate two integrated characteristics of vulnerability, danger and relevance. And I can do it for any moment of time. Danger is about technical criticality and exploitability. It shows how interesting this vulnerability may be for an attacker. Relevance shows the attention paid to this vulnerability by media, vulnerability management vendors and users of vulnerability databases. To show the current state of vulnerability I use quadrants, like consulting and research companies do it for comparing software vendors. So for products, ability to execute and completeness of vision are important. For vulnerabilities it will be danger and relevance. I gave these names two quadrants. Leading threats, local disaster, well-known issue and daily routine. So here is for example vulnerability quadrant for Heartbleed. And this one for Bedlock. As you can see, unlike Cutbleed, Bedlock was never a leading threat. We can show more than one vulnerability at the same time. For example, here I took last year's CVEs and showed dynamic of the state since the beginning of the year. To limit amount of vulnerabilities in the lower left corner, I made a rule of disappearing. Vulnerability may stay in daily routine quadrant only for 10 days with a value of danger and relevance less than three and a half, or they will disappear. Here we can see different types of vulnerabilities. For example, these vulnerabilities are about remote code execution in Apple products, iOS, MacOS, TVOS and watchOS. And these vulnerabilities in Microsoft Edge and WordPress are also dangerous and exploitable, but never get the same level of media attention. Researchers find vulnerabilities in these products on a regular basis and therefore it's not in use. Vulnerabilities of such kind are slowly drifting from local disaster quadrant to daily routine. Of course, rule of disappearing doesn't work in real life, and all vulnerabilities will exist in your infrastructure until you install the updates. If I switch off the rule and switch off all the captions, we will see something like this. So don't forget to fix vulnerabilities in your systems until it's too late. So vulnerability quadrant is a simple and universal way to show the current state for any vulnerability and dynamics of this state. It's possible to highlight most critical vulnerabilities and to identify trends. And it's just fun to watch vulnerabilities crawling on the screen. But of course, there are some problems and limitations. It's all about CVEs now. And we all know that some vulnerabilities may have multiple CVEs, and some may don't have CVEs, CVEs at all. For example, 
vulnerabilities in SAP products. And they are out of scope right now. Formulas for danger and relevance are very subjective. Basically, what factors you choose, such values you will get. However, when you use the same formulas for all vulnerabilities, the overall picture remains the same. We can make this instrument much more effective, but we need more information about exploits, malware, statistics and search history from vulnerability databases, and so on. And you can have a question. Can we use vulnerability quadrants to decide to be sure vulnerabilities are really dangerous for our infrastructure? And which vulnerabilities should be discovered and patched immediately? Well, yes, you can, but not in the form that we have seen earlier. First of all, we should switch off gravity. Vulnerability danger will not become smaller until you patch the software in your organization, as well as relevance. And you should consider only vulnerabilities in the software products that are currently in use in your organization. So, thank you very much for watching. I will be glad to answer all your questions. Please subscribe and contact me. Bye.